So today I want to share with you the most common reasons that people think boundaries don't work. Now, two of these, two of the top four, represent a pretty fundamental misunderstanding of boundaries. So I think that's really useful to think about and to know. One of them I think is pretty valid. I do think it is a reason that boundaries sometimes don't work. And the other one is kind of in between. So before we go there, I'd like you to think about when your boundaries don't work, what is the reason? What do you think the reason is? So comment below. Before I even give you the top choices, put a comment below as to the reason you think boundaries don't work. And then when we get to the end of the video, we'll see if you've changed your mind or not. Now, one reason I'm tackling this now is that we are moving into the holiday season in the U.S. and around the world, and the holidays are filled with boundary violations. So I think that understanding some of these fundamental concepts might help you navigate the holiday season a little bit easier this year and hopefully help you navigate them a little bit easier throughout the year. All right, let's get started. So the information I'm sharing with you today is from a poll that I did within the last few months about why people think boundaries don't work. And the top four reasons were mentioned by more than 50% of people, okay? So the two top reasons were mentioned by 70% of people, and then the next two were mentioned by 50% of people. So I'm going to start with number four. And number four is that boundaries don't work because they don't change the other person. So this is something that is very common. Obviously, more than 50% of people thought this was the reason they don't work. But it reflects a fundamental misunderstanding of boundaries because we don't get to use boundaries to control other people. In fact, we can't control other people. Sometimes if we're in a good enough relationship and we have a healthy discussion about boundaries, yes, sometimes people adapt and change and modify their behavior for us, but often they don't. And whether they do or not is not about whether the boundary worked, right? So the discussion with the person was productive if you're able to set a boundary and they adapt their behavior. But the boundary is about what you are willing to accept and not willing to accept what you're willing to do and not willing to do. The boundaries are about your values and who you are. So if you attempt to set a boundary with somebody who ignores it and will not change their behavior for you, the true boundary is going to be around a boundary for yourself and about yourself. Because if we are dealing with somebody who's been crossing boundaries in certain ways forever, right, and maybe they've even been crossing our boundaries forever, they're unlikely to change. So what are we going to do about it? That's what the boundaries are. So beginning to shift your thinking around boundaries to what can I do about this situation? What's within my control and what are my boundaries? What choices can I make and let go of whether the other person changes their behavior or not? And let go of the thought that the boundary doesn't work because the other person doesn't change. And of course, we love it when people adapt to us. We love it when we're able to set a boundary or discuss an issue with somebody and they understand and they respect and they change. And yeah, those are the best relationships. Those are the healthy relationships, right? And those are important. And that's great when that works. And that's great when it happens that way. But when the other person doesn't change, it does not mean the boundary hasn't worked. It means we are setting a boundary for somebody else, which we really can't do. We have to set the boundary for ourselves. Okay. Hope that made sense. Moving up to number three, which was very close to number four, but the number three reason people said that boundaries don't work is that they end up in an argument with the other person trying to convince them that the boundary is reasonable. So rather than making any progress on the boundary or on changing your own behavior or changing your situation, you are arguing with this person to convince them that the boundary is reasonable. The other person does not have to agree that the boundary is reasonable. And again, sure, it's really nice when they do. And with the people who are flexible and adaptive and empathetic and we have a good relationship with them, generally, if we can express our boundary clearly enough, which foreshadows another reason people state about boundaries. But before we go there, if we can express our boundaries clearly enough and the other person is a reasonable person, 
who cares about us and wants the relationship to work, yeah, probably there'll be some room for adaptation and negotiation. And even if they don't completely agree with our point of view, they will validate it, right? But those are not the people we end up in problems, in boundary problems with. We end up in problems with people who don't think our boundaries are reasonable, who don't think that our need for self-care is reasonable or our desire not to engage in a particular activity or behavior is reasonable. Those are the people we end up in a problem with and we get stuck trying to convince them. They don't need to be convinced. You have limited time, limited energy, and you're spending it on something if you're doing that, which probably is not going to end well. So again, if your boundaries are for you and about you, nobody can really disagree with that. And if they do, well, too bad, their problem. So what would be an example of this? An example of this might be to say to somebody, you know, you get really kind of nasty after you have a drink or two. So I really don't want to talk to you after five o'clock. I'm only going to call you in the morning. And if that person pushes back and says, well, first of all, you're totally wrong. I don't get nasty after a drink. And I think you're way too sensitive. Okay. I'm still only going to call you in the morning right? And that boundary can work even if that person doesn't change when they drink or their mood change when they had a drink and they don't have to agree with it. And they might bring it up every time that they talk to us. They're like, hey, you don't call me in the evening anymore. Nope. We talked about that. They don't have to agree with your boundary. So let me know if this is resonating or making any sense to you. But anyway, both of those reasons, 50% of people felt that those were reasons that their boundaries didn't work. Okay, the number one reason people stated that they felt that their own boundaries don't work, which 75% of people in the poll said that this was a reason, is that they can't express it in the right way. Now, this is the one that I said might be true, but might not be true. It is super helpful to use assertive language when you set a boundary, not passive, not aggressive, not passive aggressive, but assertive, clear, calm language that really, really helps. So if people feel like they can't do that, then okay, yeah, I would say that would be something to work on to improve your ability to set boundaries. But unfortunately, I think a lot of people think they're not saying it in the right way because the other person doesn't understand or because the other person doesn't agree with it. So we're right back to the last one, right? It's really about how can I say this so this person in my life thinks I'm reasonable? How can I say it so they understand my feelings? How can I say it so that they validate me? Well, maybe there is no way to say it for them to understand. There's no way to say it that they are going to validate it or agree with it. It's unrelated to how you say it. So if that is one of the reasons that you think boundaries don't work for you, think that through. Are you expecting an unrealistic end game in terms of how you're saying it? Or are you really losing your temper or disappearing or being too vague? In which case, yep, you could work on how you state your boundaries. Okay, by the way, if you are getting information that's valuable to you out of this video, I would love it if you would hit that like button. It's a big help for me. And subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed. Okay. One of the top reasons people stated that I think is super valid, and this reason got 70% of the vote from people, right? And people could vote on more than one thing, obviously. I should have said that to begin with because some people checked many of these, but these were the ones that they checked, okay? So 70% of people said that boundaries don't work for them because their automatic reactions get in the way. And that's 100% true. So if you've watched some of my other boundary material, you'll know that I really focus on the importance of emotional regulation. And emotional regulation is about how we regulate those extremes of emotion. How do we calm ourselves down, whether we tend to get angry, whether we tend to freeze, fight, or flee, right? All of those are automatic reactions that absolutely get in the way of our having healthy boundaries. So, kudos to the 70% of people who said that it's their automatic reactions that get in the way. And that is also something you can do something about. So I want to briefly talk about how you can bring some of these understandings 
into your interactions with friends and family members and coworkers. But before I do that, I just want to mention briefly, I do have a quiz, What's Your Boundary Personality Type? And this quiz identifies really your positive self-statement that might be driving certain automatic reactions and automatic patterns that are actually getting you into trouble. And most of these positive self-statements also reflect some type of negative core belief. So it's kind of a fun quiz. I think you get very valid information out of it. And I send you some myth busting tips on having healthier boundaries. So try the quiz. The link is in the description to this video. All right. So moving forward over the next few weeks, whether you are going into the holidays with the family of origin or simply a small group of friends or possibly yourself, right? Not everybody gets together with others during the holidays. But if you can bring these concepts into your interactions, bring in the thought that how you emotionally regulate. So if you're on your way into a stressful situation, breathe diaphragmatically, take some deep breaths, do some grounding, do some calming, physiologically calming exercises before going in and try to maintain it while you're there, it will make a huge difference. If you are anticipating something and you're already getting revved up, whether it's with anxiety or anger or whatever, it is only going to get worse once you get there. So the more you can kind of slow your reactions, the better it will go. And then also, if you begin to think about what can I do for myself to make this situation better, and let go of whether it changes the other person or not. All right, so I'm going to link a handful of my other videos on boundaries here and here and whoop, over there. And I greatly appreciate the fact that you spend your precious time with me on my channel. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.